in this video we hit 500 subscribers so it's time for a 500 subscriber special here at the Meyerton Motor Museum in East Lothian. So the first car we have is a 1927 Morris Minor with an 807cc engine. Now when you think of miners, you usually think of the Morris Travers, but this is a very early one. So this Morris Miner's top speed was 55 miles an hour, but you could also get 40 miles to the gallon from this little car. Next up we have quite the chassis of a 1923 Clino, 10.8 uh, brake horsepower from a 1396cc engine. This was a very early example of a very popular car in the early 20s. The engine was made by the well-known firm of Coventry Climax. And there's the gearbox there. Next up, we have a 1963 or 64 Bentley S3. So this Bentley has the 6.2 liter V8 engine, and it's one of the last Bentleys on this body shell. Yes, I want to say it's, in the, it's one of the last Bentleys on the body on chassis, and it's, that's distinguishable by the four headlamps on this model. Here we have a 1939 Vauxhall 10. Now this Vauxhall has an interesting story to tell. This was pulled from the River Tyne in Haddington when there was floods. Back in the 40s, I think. Now, back in the early days of Vauxhall, Vauxhall were sort of luxury car makers. Um, they weren't um, mass produced cars as they are nowadays. Next up, we have this uh, 1928 um, Austin Lorry um, Type 20. So, this Austin started off as a private car, then it became a hearse, and finally it became a, a lorry. And you can see the flatbed there, it's got advertising like the old, um, I don't know what they call these, it's like the set of petrol signs, you can find it's uh, petrol stations, so you've got Regent, Esso, Baxter, Johnson, Power, Regular. A familiar car to many people, and most people will recognise what this car is, this is a Mini Traveller from 1963. These were made from 1962 to 1969. This is a local car. It's, uh, the owner probably played golf in North Berwick, according to that sticker. They're called um, Mini Miners. Yeah. 
That's a beautiful colour as well. Don't know much about bikes, but this is a 1934 Gerard. Um, it was produced in Edinburgh by J. A. Porter. It was a popular motorcycle of sporting nature made in Scotland. This is a lovely little M MGM. Finished in this lovely shade of blue. So this is priced brand new with £175. And this would give you a top speed of 70 miles an hour and you'd easily get 30 miles to the gallon. It's very, very basic and just what you need um, as a driver's car. You've got your speedometer, you've got your uh, ammeter, and your oil pressure. Two-seater. It's a uh, looks as if it's got me need some plywood, I think. Nice little bit of wooden dashboard there. Very, very simple little car. I do like the wire wheels in this model as well. We've got ourselves a little section traction advance. Let's see if we can get some more details on this car, but I don't think I've ever seen one in red. Most of the traction advance I've seen are usually black. So this is a 1938 model. This was car was restored for the 50th anniversary of the model in 1984, and this car took part in the Paris to Moscow to Paris rally to commemorate the event. I just think that's it's absolutely beautiful. I've never seen, as I said, I've never seen one in red before. Next up, we have a 1982 Fiat X19. Um, it's a little uh, sporty um, coupe, soft top. This was designed by Bertoni. We, then they were transferred to the Fiat's Lingotti factory for final assembly. So this is uh, another, I think this is another Edinburgh car. It's got a service history from Albion Road Garage in Edinburgh. Extensive his service history. I just love these little cars. And I think the paint job as well is absolutely stunning. It's got sort of like a sort of glitter, sparkle effect. Absolutely stunning. There's the Bertoni badge in there. Just in there as well. Off the little car. See any interior there. Beautiful. Okay, we've got another bike here. It's a Suzuki GT260, I think. I'm not clued up on my bikes. Oh no, it does say Suzuki on it, so I'm just going to guess it is a GT260, as that's what's on the side of it. Then we have a Fiat 126. Now, I think these cars, um, the 126, came in to sort of replace like the Fiat 500, but it just never had the same appeal as the 500 did. And we're not talking about the new 500s, we're talking about the earlier 500s. Um, so this was introduced at the Turin Motor Show in 1972 as a replacement for the 500. 
Um, and some of these were produced in Poland up until the year 2000. Next up, we have the 1923 Arrow Johnson Type D. These cars were produced in Scotland. And these were built in Heath Hill, just outside of Dumfries. It's hard to believe this car is 100 years old. It's got like the, the running board there. This paint, uh, sorry, it has an all weather body. Let's just look inside here. Absolute luxury. I can just sitting in the rear of this car back in the 1920s. It would have been like the height of luxury back in the day. So, next up we have a 1927 Galloway, again uh, manufactured in Kirkudbury um, and then later on in Heath Hill near Dumfries in Scotland. This is powered by a 1.5 litre engine and this car also appeared in Dr Finlay's casebook, if you remember Dr Finlay on the television. This car has also appeared on the BBC One show and another TV series called The Five Red Herrings. Again, back in the 20s it would have been, it would have been like a uh, Life of luxury in the back of here. Yeah. You can see. No, maybe not, but the leg room in the back of this car is amazing. So, this was Dr. Snoddy's car in uh, Dr. Finley's casebook. Next up, we have this magnificent looking. Sunbeam, three liter. This looks absolutely stunning in this uh, green. We've got the start and handle at the front there. Again, this was uh, registered in Kirkcudbury. And a rather magnificent looking car as well. Absolutely love the the bullet sort of shape towards the end of the or the nose cone. It's, it looks magnificent. You've got these wheels, you've got the the wooden wheel on these tires. You've got the exhaust down the side. Very, very lovely indeed. Now, what have we got here? This looks some kind of American car, maybe? Let's have a look. So, this is a Packard Straight 8 registered in 1935. Last registered in British Columbia in 1935. Beautiful. 
And here we have a Morris Minor from 1970. This is powered by an 1100cc engine and is probably one of the last ones off the production line. I can't get any more British than a Morris Minor or a Morris Traveller. Now we've got ourselves a bit of Roots Group heritage here. This is a Humber Snooper uh, Super Snipe. Mind. It's, a, it's a very traumatic walk around as they normally call these. That's a beautiful car. Absolutely beautiful. So next up we have a 1926 um, Chrysler 2180. Don't know too much about Chrysler, um, but apparently this van is in the livery of the Edinburgh Evening News. Newspaper. This was in regular use by the Edinburgh Evening News until 1952. And from this 3 litre engine, you would get 21.6 brake horsepower. Next up, we have a 1961 Ford Zephyr 2. magnificent in that colour, doesn't it? Let's find out a little bit more about this um, Zephyr. So this Zephyr is a six-cylinder 2553cc engine. So it's from one sort of luxury Ford to another. How about this lovely Rolls Royce, Edinburgh registered, PFG, 575P. So this is a 1976 Silver Shadow 2. And there's the famous Spirit of X ecstasy here. I usually see these cars as a uh, wedding hire cars. But they're rather, rather nice. I do actually prefer these Rolls Royces um, to the newer modern ones. There's just something about an old Rolls, old, Rolls, old Rolls Royce from the 70s and the 80s compared to the modern rules. Next up, we have a 1937 MGTA. This is really powered by a 1.3 engine. Looks great on these uh, wire wheels. Got um, drum brakes front and rear. And again, Little two seater car, um, got your dials there. Worryingly, though, the passenger can see what speed you're doing because the speedometer is over on the passenger side. Interesting. 
So I'm guessing here, the switch here would be your indicators. Yeah, looks rather nice. So this is a Bonneville um, race car built in 2004. Yes, so this is a built in 2004. It's based on a 1928 Ford Roadster. You've got, I'm guessing that bag in the back of your parachute. Slow you down. Because I'm guessing Bonneville is the salt flat, I think, isn't it? Very, very nice. 